I am your host, Leah Demba, and you are listening to the Oracle On Purpose podcast, where we help intentional leaders clarify their purpose and next steps to create a work and life of significance. Hey, people. (laughs) Hey, friends. Are you ready to shake the shame game? Shake it. Shake it off. Shake off the shame. Let it go. Why? Why would you need to? All right, so tonight I wanted to share something that can be fundamental, really, to being successful, which is, so yes, how do we shake off the shame game? How do we shake the shame game? There there are so many times when I'm working with my clients, and, and even myself, honestly, where I remember that what is really holding me back isn't that I'm, I don't know what I want. It isn't that it's not clear where I'm going. It's this insipid undertone of shame that stops me from going to the next level. And it probably stops you too. And here's what it can look like. I had a client the other day say to me, actually earlier today, say to me that, you know, it, it registers for her it registered for her as we were talking about what she had just achieved and she had just made $120,000, $120,000 and was having a difficulty assimilating how easy it was. We'd worked on helping her become completely aligned with who she is and what she's trying to do. We spent an entire day together on a mastermind retreat one-on-one. And through that process, stripped away everything else, all of the noise, all the confusion, and came right to the center of the matter, right to what she's here to do, her unique life purpose, and how she can actually activate that in her business. And it worked. (laughs) It worked. The money started flowing in. It's really easy. And suddenly, there's there's this catch in her, right? A doubt an uneasiness about how easy it was. And as we uncovered the layers of that, what's really behind it, and this is often the case, is the shame of having what she wants, whatever she wants. Really, the shame of feeling like, who is she, right? Who are you to to have what you want? Who are you to show up that way, brilliant, bright, beautiful, alive, right? On purpose. Who are you? That's what the shame monster, you know, whispers in your ear when no one else is watching. That's that's the game. That's the trap that needs to be recognized and avoided at all costs. So how, how do you do that? How do you stop playing the shame game with yourself? First and foremost, you have to recognize it when it's happening. You have to recognize it when it's happening, right? So when that voice starts to play that recorder, you know, that message over and over in the back of your head, as you are feeling excited as you're stepping out, as you're doing something new, or when you're in a group of people and you feel like you want to share something amazing that's happened to you, um, whether that's a successful landing of a contract, whether that's, you know, taking a big leap in your business or expanding into a new area, or even pivoting and changing completely what you're doing. And there's a like an internal volcano erupting of joy and excitement and suddenly there's a tap, right? There's a cap put on you and you're like, oh, never mind. And you start to shrink back. And it, sometimes it feels as if you're looking around yourself and you see people giving you the eye, right? Of giving you the impression that what you're saying is either impossible or that you're bragging or that whatever you're trying to achieve is outlandish, right? Ridiculous even. That's the word we use in our Master Creators Guild group. I said, make it ridiculous. Whatever you're choosing, make it ridiculous. Play in the field 
a ridiculous possibility. Why? Because there is nothing better to shut the shame main, you know, the shame game up than a ridiculously amazing achievement. Now, that seems maybe a bit counterproductive or counterintuitive. But the reality of it is that the reason the shame game works is because we give it power. Everything that we have created right in front of us is there as either a lesson, right? Or an an example of what we have been thinking about and and ruminating over everything that we've created, right? Because we're co-creators. So when the shame monster comes walking up, you know, whispering in your ear, you created that too. And there's a subtle reason that it sticks around because at one point for whatever reason, right? It was there to protect you. It was there to caution you for whatever reason, in whatever situation you might not have been feeling safe. Right. And so the shame kept you from really shining in that moment and it's outlived its use. Now, here's a good example of this. Today, my son is amazing and incredible and brilliant and bright. And yes, I'm a mom. And yes, it's also true. Was kind of bullied into performing this little dance of his at school in front of all the kids during like a lunch break by some other kids. Right. So there was like some peer pressure and he fell prey to the peer pressure. And then they all laughed at him. Y'all feel that? And as a mom, I got to tell you, good thing I wasn't around. (laughs) However, what I also recognized when I talked about to him about it later was this is an opportunity for me to make sure that the shame monster doesn't jump in this, this, this little scene and stay put here because he showed up. He, he danced in front of the whole school and he gave it his all. And the other kids laughed. That doesn't mean that what he did was wrong. It doesn't mean that he's whatever they were saying, right? All of those things. And it could have. It could have. So our conversation was different because I based it around him understanding his own authority. Right? So when they when I said when they call you names or call you chicken for not doing this thing they're daring you to do, no. I want you to know for yourself, is this something you want to do, period? And you have the right, no matter what, to say no or yes, whatever, but that it's your decision and that that part of honoring our own autonomy is what shuts the shame monster up, right? It doesn't have anything to latch on to. Because we're not feeding it. So the next thing to do is don't feed the shame monster. Right? Don't feed it. Know who you are, what you're about, what you're doing. Feed that. Find a community of people that feed that in you. And that's why I love the Master Creators Guild group so much. These are powerful women who are making you know, some of them making multiple millions, six, six figures and more. And in this group, they get to be real about their journey of exploring all of these pieces that have in the past made their success hard. And instead, now we get to embrace doing all of these amazing things the easy way, with E, with confidence, with clarity, with focus. And because of that, when the shame monster comes rattling around, they have a place to go and speak it out and shut it off, right? They have people around them in their community that will prove to them that the shame monster is a liar 
and that they don't have to fall prey to it anymore or listen to it anymore. And that instead, right, if we're not feeding it, what we are feeding is the fact. Oh, shame monster hates the facts, ladies and gentlemen. So the last thing is to know that you don't want to feed it, but you do want to feed the facts. You want to stand in your own autonomy. Know what you know, what you know. Understand what you have created. And know that that's, that is the thing. That is the thing to be proud of. That is the thing to shout from the rooftops. That is what you celebrate. And if people around you, this is you, hello out there. If people around you aren't celebrating just as loud as you are about the things you've created, then you need to get new people. You need a new circle. You need a new cheering squad that's there for you, that understands that bold actions, right, and leadership of this magnitude requires that we don't pretend anymore that the boxes we used to live in are for us. The spaces we used to climb and crawl back into are no longer part of our future. And instead, it's wide open. It's get whatever we want it to be. And my hope is that as you start to kind of play with these ideas, you find that support. You look for people that will help hold you accountable to knowing what you know and celebrating who you are and living your life fully, completely out loud and being the best and boldest version of yourself that you can be. If you don't have that, I highly recommend you join us next month at the Purpose and Prosperity Accelerator, where we will be creating that foundation for you. And where every week we will be cheering you on and giving you the opportunity to really honor your own personal desires, your own goals, and to celebrate every step forward so that you can shut the shame up monster up for good. You can. You can shut the shame monster up for good when you start feeding that part of you that knows how absolutely incredible and amazing you are. So those are my words tonight. I'm Leah Dunlap, the Oracle on Purpose. I'm so glad that you're here watching this tonight and I will see you next time. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the Oracle on Purpose show. If you found value in this episode, we'd appreciate you leaving a comment. Also, you can subscribe and ring the bell if you haven't yet. If you'd like to get clear on your highest vision and next steps, go to oracleonpurpose.com. See you next week.